JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 13th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar reversed back south against all the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. It lost the most ground versus NOC, GBP, AUD, SEC and NZD in that order while it, under, it underperformed the list against CAT and the Euro. The weakening of the US dollar combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi suggests that markets traded in a risk-on uh, fashion yesterday and today in Asia. That said, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU indices continued their Monday slide, with UK's FTSE 100 falling the most, perhaps due to a strengthening pound after uh, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey said that uh, there were lots of issues with cutting interest rates below zero and that such a move could hurt banks. That said, market sentiment improved during the US session, with all three of Wall Street's main indices closing the green. Perhaps investors regained confidence uh, that a large fiscal stimulus in the US under the Biden presidency will spur a faster economic recovery and that vaccinations will eventually win the battle against the pandemic. The upbeat morale uh, rolled over into the Asian session today as well. Although China's Shanghai Composite slid 0.27%, Japan's Nikkei 225, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI gained 1.04, uh, 0.08 and 0.71% respectively. As for today, the main event on uh, the agenda may be the US CPIs for December. The headline rate is forecast to have ticked up to 1.3% year over year from 1.2% while the core one is anticipated to have held steady at 1.6%. Last week, it was all about the runoff elections in the US state of Georgia, with uh, Democrats winning both seats, something that sparked speculation for more fiscal stimulus and infrastructure spending in the US under Joe Biden's presidency. On top of that, on Friday, non-farm payrolls for December fell 140,000, recording their first drop since April, something that may have increased speculation for more monetary policy support by the Fed in the months to come. Remember that the minutes from the latest FOMC gathering revealed that some members noted that they could consider further adjustments to their QE purchases, such as increasing the pace of purchases or weighting them towards longer-term maturities. In our view, a rise in headline CPI is unlikely to decrease the chances for the Fed to expand its stimulative efforts. After all, the committee wants inflation to rise above 2% for some time, so it averages 2% over time. Thus, with both headline and core rates below the 2% mark, even an upside surprise may not be enough to change the dollar's faith. Yes, the currency could rebound at the time of the release, but we don't expect this to last for long. Eventually, it may come back under selling interest on hopes of more stimulus uh, by the US government, as well as by the FOMC. Something like that may also help equities to continue trending north. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the European morning, we get Eurozone's industrial production for November, which is expected to have slowed to 0.2% month over month from 2.1%. Uh, Later in the US, besides the CPIs, we also get the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week. Expectations are for a 2.266 million barrels slide following an 8.010 million fall the week before. However, bearing in mind that uh, yesterday the American Petroleum Institute reported uh, 5.821 million uh, barrels slide, 
we would consider the risks surrounding the energy formation administration release as uh, tilted to the downside. We also have five speakers on today's agenda, and those are ECMB President Christine Lagarde, Fed Vice Chair Richard Clarida, St. Louis Fed President James uh, Bullard, Philadelphia Fed President pa Patrick Harker, and Fed Board Governor uh, Lyle Brainard. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.